In the top stories, 15 immigrants in custody after dinghy docks at Gallows Bay Nevis. Autopsy performed on the body of Sylvester Crossley and traffic accident involving pedestrian being investigated. The details on these stories and more after the break. Get the kind of value you love that's unmatched at Courts now. We're unmatched in quality and prices. Buy any item and get up to 30% off the second item of same or equal value store-wide. When you shop with Ready Finance, you can get it now with no cash and pay over time. Now that's unmatched value. Only at Courts. Bringing value home. Special conditions apply. Promotion runs February 28, 2023. In cricket, there are a few essentials. <laughs> a bat. A pitch. A ball. Some fielders. And plenty of refreshments. Enjoy the cricket with Angostura Chill. Angostura Chill, the official refreshment partner of the Hero CPL T20. Hello and welcome to the ZRZ Channel 5 newscast. I'm Carla Berridge. The police have taken 15 people into custody following a report made about a boat coming ashore at Gallows Bay, Nevis. The report was received on Friday, February 3rd at about 6 p.m. The information given also stated that two men came out of the boat and were walking towards Bath Village. Officers from the police force and the St. Kitts and Nevis Customs and Excise Department responded. The two men were found in Bath Village and were stopped and questioned. It was revealed that the men were nationals of Dominica and Haiti. It was also revealed that they arrived on a motor vessel that was anchored off the coast of, Gallows Bay, of the Gallows Bay area. They made their way to the shore using a dinghy. Officers accompanied the men to the vessel where they found 13 nationals of Haiti, 10 adults and 3 juveniles on board. They were all detained by the police pending further investigations. The police have released the results of an autopsy performed on the body of 30-year-old Sylvester Crossley of Mattanite who resided in Halfway Tree. The autopsy was done on February 6, 2023 by resident pathologist Dr. Adrian Nunes. Dr. Nunes concluded that death was as a result of hypovolemic shock due to multiple gunshot wounds to the body and head. According to a press statement, the police responded to a report of the incident at about 9 p.m. last Wednesday. Investigations revealed that 30-year-old Sylvester Crossley of Halfway Tree went into a business establishment and while waiting, he was approached by a lone masked gunman who shot him several times then fled the scene. The district medical officer pronounced Crossley dead and the crime scene was processed by personnel from the Forensic Services Unit. The police have charged a man in connection with a traffic accident in which a pedestrian was injured. According to a police release, sometime after 8 p.m. on February 1st, the police responded to a report of a traffic accident along the F.T. Williams Highway. The accident involved SUV P4482, which is owned by Alicia Dacent Hendrickson of Bastier, but was being driven by Ian Bolas of Station Street Old Road and pedestrian Nigel Brown of St. Johnston Avenue. According to the police, Bolas was traveling west and Brown was crossing the street when the collision occurred. Brown was transported to the JNF General Hospital via the Emergency Medical Service where he was treated for his injuries. He suffered a fractured knee and multiple bruises about the body. During their investigations, the police found Bolas had committed the offenses of driving without insurance and driving without a valid and unexpired driver's license for which he was charged on February 2, 2023. Six bills will receive their first reading and two will receive their second reading when parliamentarians meet at government headquarters this week for the next sitting of the National Assembly. The session is slated for Wednesday at 10 a.m. Prime Minister Honorable Dr. Terence Drew will introduce and have read for a first time the bills entitled Caribbean Community and Africa Export-Import Bank Agreement for the Establishment of a Partnership Bill and the Criminal Records Rehabilitation of Offenders Amendment Bill. 
The Prime Minister will also move the second reading of an amendment to the Criminal Records Rehabilitation of Offenders Bill 2023. The Attorney General, Honorable Gath Wilkin, will introduce and have read a first time amendments to the Bill's Integrity in Public Life Bill, Anti-Corruption Bill, Freedom of Information Bill 2023, as well as the first reading of Official Gazette Bill 2023. Attorney General Wilkin will also move the second reading of the official Gazette Bill 2023. The National Assembly will be carried live on ZIZ Radio 96.1 FM and participating radio stations. It can also be viewed live on TV Channel 5 in St. Kitts and Channel 98 in Nevis. It will also be streamed live at www.zizonline.com. Copies of bills, as soon as they are made available, can be found on the website sknis.kn of the St. Kitts and Nevis Information Service under the section titled Bills. After the break, Minister of Education applauds school, gui school guidance counselors and Prime Minister says National Dementia Plan is important. Stay with us. Hotspots value by IGA specials running January 26 to February 8th. Now, our value club blue tag specials. Bigelow teas, $9.99. IGA and essential everyday pancake syrup, $9.99. Dole juice blends, $12.99. Shoppers value ice cream, $35.99. Birds I call on the cob, $16.99. Downy fabric softener, April fresh, $25.49. And now, a very low weekly value deals. IG and Essential Everyday Pancake Mix, $9.99. IG and Essential Everyday Chunk Light Tuna, $3.49. Extra Liquid Detergent, $22.99. Crunch and Munch, $4.99. Almond Hammer the other one, $7.99. Boost Nutritional Drinks, $8.99. Shop Smart, Shop Volumart. Want to get away? Now you can. Stop standing in long ATM lines to withdraw cash. Use your national debit or black cards to complete a wide variety of transactions at supermarkets, variety stores, gas stations, pharmacies, and more. Shop online at the most popular websites and stores for quality brands using your national debit or black cards. And take back your time to enjoy all the things that you love to do. Remember, instead of waiting in long ATM lines to withdraw cash, use your national bank cards today. National Bank. Always here. We embarked a couple of years ago on a transformation program and that is essentially to, to push the company into the 21st century. We are seeking to continue to be relevant, continue to be the leader in the business community because if you stand still, um, somebody else is moving ahead of you. We now employ about 110 persons on Nevis across the group. Back then we probably had half of them. GBC impacted people's lives have about a handful of people who will tell you TVC is my life I'm supporting st stakeholders obviously very very strong and committed staff and customers who believe in us well, the scholarship program is I'm concerned one of the best in St. Kitts almost every year you get a student who says one day, I'm going to be Prime Minister. I was interviewing for the Warrell Tyson Scholarship Program. Eventually, was told a few weeks later that I was a successful recipient. Those soft skills, I think, were tremendous and still serve me even up to today. Welcome back. 
In a statement to mark the opening of School Counselors Week, Minister of Education Honorable Dr. Jeffrey Hanley thanked the school's guidance counseling departments for the significant role they play in creating an environment which fosters the comprehensive growth of students. Our guidance counselors have taken the time to care and devote their time, resources and diligent effort to foster the holistic development of our students. They have served diligently over the many years, developing strong pillars for our students to overcome challenges and to dare to dream big. He also spoke on the nature of work done by the school's counseling departments. Guidance counselors have gone above and beyond the call of duty to deliver preventative, interventive, and supportive services to our students, parents, teachers, and the community in which they serve. They have developed varied programs to meet the personal, social, academic, and career needs of our students, teachers, and parents. Through individual and group counseling, mentorship programs, life skill programs, career development services, academic development services, workshops, seminars, volunteer programs with limited resources and in countless other ways, they continue to serve. The School Counselors Week will be celebrated under the theme School Counselors Helping Students Dream Big during the, re during the week Monday, February 6th to Friday, February 10th. Prime Minister Honorable Dr. Terence Drew says it is important that a national dementia plan be put in place. The Prime Minister was at the time responding to a question at a press briefing about the government's intentions to create a plan for persons living with dementia, having agreed along with other ministries of health across the region a few years ago to develop an action plan. The government is doing an assessment of all of these programs. This one came to my attention. As you know, I I'm fully abreast, I'm a medical doctor by training, and I think a dementia, um, this type of program is critical and important that it, be, that it be put in place, and this, of course, will be taken up by the new administration within the Ministry of Health, and this will be on the purview of the new PS as well. As you know, the PS would have worked significantly in mental health, and this, I sh I'm sure, is, is one of the things. This, as the Alzheimer's Association of St. Kitts and Nevis participates in the What's Your Plan campaign to encourage ministries of health across the region to start developing the plan. On Friday, as part of the What's Your Plan campaign, President of the Alzheimer's Association of St. Kitts and Nevis, Dr. Joan Rollins, and Secretary to the Association, Dr. Sharon Esdale, met with Chief Medical Officer Dr. Hazel Laws. Referring to the meeting as encouraging, Dr. Rollins noted that the CMO and the Ministry are committed to seeing the development and implementation of a National Dementia Plan for St. Kitts and Davis. President of the Caribbean Development Bank, CDP, Dr. Hygienus Leon, paid a courtesy call on Premier of Nevis, Honorable Mark Brantley, at his Pinney's Estate office on Friday. Premier Brantley said he was pleased to welcome Dr. Leon to the island. Dr. Leon said he was looking forward to having an engaging conversation with Premier Brantley as the CDB is very excited about the prospect for Nevis and the Federation generally, particularly in the geothermal space. Ahead of their discussion, Premier Brantley presented Dr. Leon with a Nevis Naturally gift bag with locally made products and the CDB president gifted the Premier with a token of appreciation on behalf of the institution. The Caribbean Development Bank recently approved U.S. $17 million in funding for the Nevis Geothermal Project. The production drilling phase is set to begin in June 2023 and is anticipated to last six months. The blood bank at the Joseph N. France General Hospital is calling on persons to donate blood of all types to stop the National Reserve. Director of Health Institutions Dr. Jensen Morton told ZIZ that as it stands right now, there needs to be an increase in the number of donations in order for the blood bank and the hospital to function optimally. 
sure people would have seen over the months and maybe years when someone's in the hospital how there has to be um, public appeals to give blood for this person that person that's really not the ideal way that's supposed to be kind of a last resort the um, hospital system is supposed to be functioning on its own such that we have regular persons coming in to donate in non-crisis times for us to always have a good reserve such that only when there are little particular instances maybe we might have to look at our registry and call a few people or when we see something going low and just ensure that things always topped up and the personal advocacy should be last resort, last resort only. He said one of the goals of the blood drive is to encourage persons to give blood regularly throughout the year. The state with regards to blood donation, it also wasn't as robust as it could have been even before COVID. So this is to remind people of the importance of donating blood, that it should be an act that persons do regularly once they're able to and, you know, donate, donate a pint, save a life and to just get into the habit of every now and again doing such. He said donating blood saves lives and spoke of various reasons why patients would need blood. Um, it could be persons that had um, anything traumatic that caused an extreme amount of blood loss. It could be persons that would have um, been suffering from chronic anemia, persons with some disorder, sickle cell disease, um, persons with certain ailments. Um, in certain ailments, the body might shut down the whole mechanism for making blood to focus on doing something else. So. For a myriad of reasons, someone can be admitted to the hospital and need blood products, which is why this is very important. Dr. Morton said anyone is eligible to give blood. However, the, refer the preferred age is between 18 and 65, and younger persons are the most ideal candidates. Coming from Regional News, Ghana's Transparency Institute president weighs in on the country's low score on corruption index. The details